first question is, so do you think Europe has the mobile networks it needs to be competitive? Uh, absolutely. If you are not competitive, uh, then you have not m more uh, many chances, uh, you know, in a global uh, you know, competition in which uh, we are. So uh, I think there is a clear example in which uh, the telecom sector in Europe was really uh, competitive and doing extremely well in a global competition which was, uh, you know, two past uh, decades uh, with uh, the leading of, uh, you know, of uh, GSMA uh, standard operating system which uh, the European Union mandated. And that, that was a real example of how much uh, competitive uh, you can be, Europe can be. So it's a matter of uh, take the proper decision now in which in some way or another uh, Europe uh, telecom sector doesn't uh, doesn't uh, see uh, the, the best of the, the, of the situation they can be today. So a number of things. Let me point out uh, two things which I consider extremely important in that. One is, uh, you know, in some way or another, uh, warranty the, the rights uh, to access uh, to the radio spectrum. Uh, I think uh, this uh, dimension uh, should uh, become a really strategic uh, policy uh, over the next uh, decade. And on the other hand, uh, I think it's uh, worth it to mention the need for consolidation of the market. Uh, there is still a lot of uh, companies, extremely fragmented uh, markets, uh, which uh, doesn't provide uh, the scale and the funding capacity for building up the new generation infrastructure for the mobile sector. Okay, so that those are the steps Europe needs to take to, to keep or maintain a, a lead? Uh, I would say that not only to maintain it, but uh, to go forward. Yeah. Because if you only leave it as a business usual uh, manner, that will be very difficult to really compete yeah. with other, you know, not only US, but think in Japan, China, and so on. South Korea, for example. Okay. So, uh, what uh, what can regulators do to ensure that Europe makes the best of the digital economy? Well, yes, yes. Well, the regulators can do something, but can uh, not do all. And uh, indeed, they can do just a small part. Uh, I must say. I mean, the, the main, uh, you know, uh, strategies and decision must be taken by uh, the companies, uh, by the industry. It is, uh, but but a regulator can do it. Uh, you know, in a way that you provide a friendly environment. On the contrary, you put a lot of obstacles for this uh, to happen. And I think it's uh, the duty uh, of the of re regulator to uh, look uh, at uh, this sector as uh, you know providing uh, you know a friendly uh, mm, a friendly market in which they can develop proper investment. Uh, they can build on the scale they need, so the consolidation of the market can be. A reality and um, you know for example let's say on a spectrum policy uh, all measures that uh, are uh, in the direction of a better coordination uh, are indispensable at european level uh, for example uh, the, the digital single market uh, to be completed by 2015 for example that will be great all these kind of things are the one that provides um, environments uh, which uh, uh, you know can be uh, used uh, by uh, companies by the sector to really improve in terms of uh, competitiveness. And so what extent do you think Europe's national markets, telecoms markets can be harmonized? Can they be completely harmonized or will there always be national differences? Well completely harmonized I think uh, I mean, it's not only that it's not possible probably but probably it's not needed probably it's not advisable as well so you have to take uh, into account that it's needed uh, balance you know uh, between the degree of uh, let's say, a harmonization if it's needed, but uh, mostly I think that uh, sometimes what you need is a, a better coordination. Uh, still coming back to the spectrum dimension, right, the spectrum dimension, it's very clear that uh, better coordination is, is needed uh, without uh, delay, I must uh, say. And final question, now, how much difference do you think the proposed telecom single market package will make? But the consumer market package is a, a number of uh, concrete measures. For example, again, with the spectrum, the better coordination, uh, the um, expanding to 30 years for the rights uh, of uh, license uh, use, uh, using, and uh, other measures which uh, have to do with uh, the authorization for operating in all 
uh, European countries, or uh, you know, also not to forget uh, the open internet, an open internet that can be, you know, really open for everyone, for consumers, for buyers, for companies, for individuals, and for everyone that uh, will see in internet an opportunity. Also, uh, this dimension is there. So, and not to forget about one of the start of the package for consumers, uh, users uh, at least, which is uh, goodbye, Romin, <laughs> which uh, well, uh, I think is uh, important. You know, after uh, one regulation, two regulation, three regulation now for Romin, if we, we leave things uh, in a business as usual manner, we will see for sure. I can tell you. Uh, roaming 4, roaming 5, roaming 6, and I think it's time yeah, really that uh, retail roaming, uh, you know, charges for roaming at, uh, uh, you know, regarding uh, voice, SMEs, and data, and data, uh, you know, are abolished by uh, 2015, as Parliament has proposed.